At a March public forum discussing the Safer Missouri Local Control Ballot Initiative, Police Chief Dan Isom expressed some concern about the legislation taking away his power. Chief, for some reason I, I, I sense maybe some possible trepidation about local control. What would be your concern about this transition of local control? What's important to me is control over hiring and discipline and firing. This issue of structure and control of the police department, who's going to determine that? And in this ballot initiative, the Civil Service Commission determines that, uh, not the chief, uh, not anyone else. And so who are those people going to be? Uh, so that, that actually concerns me quite a bit. If the initiative petition, which is funded by conservative ideologue and billionaire Rex Singfield, gains enough signatures, it will appear on the November ballot. The initiative would transfer control of the police department from the state of Missouri to the city of St. Louis. The new public safety director, Eddie Roth, gave his opinions on the issue. He said, you, you only want one chief of police. The, the, the chief of police uh, it, it is the font of professional standards in a police department. Do you worry that with these two provisions that uh, we set it up where the bug still doesn't really stop with anybody? Uh, and in fact, uh, we risk that the police department can be as soon as mismanaged and out of control as many other city departments. People's heads can roll at the very top, including the mayor, because it, you know, um, if, if things don't go right. So I think that there are natural pressures that come to bear in terms of making a police department responsive to the community under this that don't exist under the current state control. Though the chief, aldermen, and various community organizations want to see a civilian review board established as part of local control, the ballot language would not make it easy. And then, if we're talking about transparency, as we talked about, how is that going to be any different than what we're doing right now? Uh, I don't really see much of a difference. Um, that's where civilian review comes in. I believe, based on what I said at the last session, that we can withstand the scrutiny of anybody. I believe in my police department, I believe, believe in what we do, and I believe in our people. So if a civilian review is looking over our investigations and our decisions, I think they will withstand that review. Uh, we oppose civilian review boards. It's our perspective that uh, their only purpose is to drive a wedge between the police and the community, and, and uh, we'll, we'll oppose them until uh, we're convinced otherwise. And you were in all the discussions with the ballot initiative? Ballot I was. And did the issue of civilian review come up in, that, in those discussions? Yes. And what was the nature of those? I, I wondered aloud if we should uh, put provisions in the legislation to, uh, to outright outlaw that. And I talked myself out of it, as I often do. I mean, I think local control is an important thing for the city to have. There needs to be that affinity and closest and direct involvement with the police department. It doesn't, it exists everywhere else other than Kansas City and St. Louis. So, if, you know, I haven't um, said that I don't think that people should vote for this. What I, what I do believe is that people always should know what they're voting for or what they're voting against. And so this section appears that it circumscribes, just as you hoped it might, how that might be established, and that is that the civil service would uh, be in control of however that worked out in terms of discipline and 